Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and welcome to part four of Modular Mondays. So a very quick recap before we get started this time. This is my modular so far, which I'm calling Fast Food Corner, even though that's technically only one small portion of it. It's the bit that sort of dominates it, I think. And part one was the fast food corner itself. Part two was the lower floor of Ronin's, my pawnbroker shop. And then part three was the pharmacy and entrance to the upstairs business, which we don't yet know what it is. Now, if you haven't seen parts one, two and three, I suggest you stop doing this video right now. Go and watch those, get all caught up and we'll see you back here right about now. Okay, so for those of you who are remaining, today we're going to start on the second floor and we're going to do the second floor of the pawnbroker shop. Now the reason why I'm doing that one next rather than starting the mystery business is just because the way I have the architecture set up, these three were once one building uh, which has been since carved up into a number of different businesses, whereas this smaller building, which is sharing a wall, is a lot older with a much different building style. So when it's all finished, you'll see that the two buildings are sort of very different, but uh, sharing the wall, abutted to each other. So I thought I would do the second floor of this one because it's quite distinct. And then because obviously the entire floor will lift off as a layer like all modulars do, uh, it will form a distinct part of that and it will be easier to do that way round. So, without further ado, let's get bag number four for part number four. And here it is, full of lovely sand blue bricks and tan bricks and lots of plates for the flooring and a bit that just rolled off over there. Right, I'm going to need some... Uh, Grey plates for the floor, I think, first of all. So anyone who's ever built a Lego official modular will know you always end up with something like this when you start building the second and third floors and so on, which is just all the plates for the flooring with loads of supportive bricks underneath, holding it all together. Now this bit that's sticking out is just the part of the first part of the next uh, bit of the upstairs. But, um, you know, you want it all to be joined together securely, so you needn't worry about that. The bit we're doing today is this square here. This bit that's sticking out obviously represents the bit above the bay window. And the big hole obviously represents the access from the stairwell. And there's a little notch in the back here, which actually aligns perfectly with the black tile that we had at the top of the stairs of the previous floor so when this clips onto here not only is it sort of a seamless black band around that side and that side but also on that side and then it turns into dark grey when it becomes the interior of a different floor so just to show you that again that's where the notch is there and it really helps this piece get orientated in its correct position because obviously it can't go down until it's in the right place. And some modulars are easier than others to put the floors together. Some are quite difficult because, uh, especially at arm's length, because um, they don't have features like that. So great, we've got our nice flat platform to start building on. As I say, you'll have to ignore that bit onwards because that's going to be something different. Uh, but now I can get on with tiling this upstairs floor. I decided to tile this one because the downstairs is tiled and I figured it would be uh, done the same way in both floors. I don't think I'm going to tile all of the upstairs floors because uh, there's A, a huge area, and B, I don't think the establishment I've got up here uh, lends itself so much to being tiled. So, uh, yeah, I've got to do lots and lots of tiny tan and dark tan and white tiles to replicate that floor in there. And there is the lovely floor. 
I do like this pattern very much. I'll do this practically in every building I make, I think, if I had the choice, maybe with different colour combinations or something. But it is incredibly piece intensive and it's very time consuming actually to lay with all these one by ones getting the orientation right. But um, yeah, I wish I could tile every single building I make because it does look a lot better. But yeah, I just don't think that's going to work. Anyway, uh, this one you can see is the same pattern as downstairs. I've added jumper plates just so I can have some customers standing in the middle of the room. And then towards the outside of the room where I've got all these one by one uh, plates, they're still in the style of the flooring. So the pattern gets maintained, but they're to support bits of furniture or bits of uh, stock that are for sale. Uh, so it's a result of meticulous planning rather than me just sort of thinking I'm going to need a few of them. Each one of these has got a very precise uh, target for what's going to be standing on it. And obviously the band around the outside is the walling. And then the brown bit here is just the beginning of a sort of, uh, well, handrail slash sort of banister to stop people falling down the stairs. So that will fit like that. It's looking pretty good already. Yeah, I like that. So now I think I can start building one of the walls. Um, let's do this wall because there's quite a lot of stock against that. So that'll probably be a good place to start along here. Okay, so here's that wall being this side, the side that's going to be exposed in my city actually but would be against its neighbor modular if you were doing it that way and it's in this beautiful sand blue color and it's important when using a color like this to acknowledge that not all bricks exist in every color so a notable uh, example here is the fact that a one by three brick just doesn't seem to exist in sand blue so if you want to do a three then you need a one and a two but uh, these inverted slopes do exist, so I've managed to put some of those in, and they're going to support a shelf, just a 1x8 brown plate. And I'm also going to have a table mounted on all those studs going right along this wall with loads of good stuff for sale. And that's just using some palisade bricks and a brown plate. And just so it fits, I need to put that one in first, I believe, before I can put this in Let's squeeze it underneath that there we are so now you'll see that all those plates have been hidden by the legs of this table and um, much like our ground floor was full of more old stuff sort of antiques they had uh, antiques weapon sections some old statues old cups and stuff like that this floor is going to be very much more the modern side of things so I'm going to have a lot of electrical equipment so um, let's put in a pink friends stereo boombox type thing I mean it's a cassette deck really so probably no one's gonna buy that and here's another one <laughs> but anyway maybe they're uh, desirable again or have become collectors items who knows there's a couple of those on the shelf and it's good to get a bit of variety in color as well other electrical items that might be for sale when somebody started a hobby that lasted not very long <laughs> we've probably all done that so there's a uh, metal detector there will be more wall here so it can just lean against that uh, and then why not have a drill an electric drill I mean, there's often a lot of tools at these places because uh, people have either used them once or just what they have to hand when they need to free up some capital I'm not sure I can get that one on there because the next bit I want to do is using this uh, bracket piece and I've deliberately put that in I mean it's it's seamless on the other side because it's part of this stripe but it's so I could mount uh, a particular piece that I wanted to do which was this bulldog sort of emblem now this comes from a Technic set, I think it's a Technic set, it's a Mac truck, Mac Anthem 42078. And I just saw this one piece for sale, and I love dogs, and I love bulldogs especially, so uh, this is a very interesting piece for me. But it's mounted on a Technic 
axle sort of base connector. So uh, it's very hard to put on a shelf. So what I've done is made a little plinth for it out of a Technic brick with the X in it, and then a two by a one by two plate just to finish it off. And then it's like that, but then that still can't fit to a shelf unless it's connecting directly to the wall. Aha, so that's how I've got around that issue. So now I've got this lovely bronzed bulldog statue for sale in our pawn shop. So now I can probably see if I can fit the drill in. Now I know what's next to it. Because these do fit on. Maybe not in between, maybe it's in between a gap of four that they fit. There we go, that fits very easily. It's between four studs that they fit, not between two. Uh, and then I thought I could have other collectibles. So maybe you've got a, a very uh, expensive or valuable toy from yesteryear. This is actually just one of the micro figures from the Saturn V set, 21309. But maybe that's uh, for sale. We've also got a Heroica skeleton, but maybe again it's a, um antique and valuable toy. So maybe we'll put that there. That's nice and colourful. Even got one of those sort of gold nugget pieces. Maybe it's a sort of geode or something like that. Put that near the metal detector. Oh, it's fallen over. Um, and that could be for sale. Maybe that's an ornament or I don't know. It doesn't really matter with a shop like this. That's the joy of it. You can pretty much put in it whatever you've got available uh, and, mm, and free. Let's try this again. I'll see if I can put it in between four studs. It's very hard doing this, A, on camera, and B, there we go, and B, uh, in very fiddly small spaces with fat fingers. Uh, there we go. So there we are. There's our nice shelf full of loads of interesting things for sale. I like it. Oh, that's not pushed down. That'll annoy some of you. <laughs> good, good. So that looks fun. I mean, I've been through my all my bags of stuff and I've come up with things that could be old albums or posters and guitars and signs and all sorts of good stuff, cups, statues, just to see what I think I want to put on my shelves. So not all of that will make it. We'll see together what does. But I think that's a good start and maybe I'll put some more stuff on the front of here uh, as and when we get uh, the rest of that out. So I think I'm going to go this way around because it worked well last time doing the sort of windowy front last. So I think I'm going to do the back wall and maybe some of the side wall and we'll uh, do the uh, banister for the stairway as well. Right, there's the next two walls done. And I've kept up this Sam Blue colour, which looks really nice with the uh, tan thick stripe and then thin stripe, which has enabled me to get in lots of different modified uh, plates as well and it's important to get some bricks sticking out so you can join this element of the whole building to the other elements of the uh, first floor just like we have here for example because otherwise when we get to lifting off the first layer the uh, well it'll come off in two halves essentially rather than in one sort of tray which is what we want so it's important to get some linkages so I have more linkages along the top but it's also quite difficult because if you're going to have this colour brick in this building and a different colour brick for the other building and you don't want any sort of bleed of colours in between the two, then that's quite hard to maintain. But just like the lower floor, the wall will come up to about here. So this is outside, this surface here and this one, hence the small window. Uh, and this will be inside the other building. And that's why I'm using these uh, bricks with studs on the side on both sides, partially because I'm limited in this color as to how many uh, modified bricks are actually available, um, but also because I want to hang stock on both uh, sets of walls anyway. And that's why I've done shelving on this wall because we don't want the other side to be uh, affected. And why I've done studs on the side on these two walls because they're interior walls. So jolly good, looks nice from all angles and we've got a lot more space to put some stuff. So first I'm going to do the uh, banister. So I've just got some one by one round plates. 
and both one by one and six by one normal plates and that will make a sort of turned wood banister which I can then cap off with a tile being a one by six and a one by two so hopefully that looks good yeah I think that's quite good let's try that on the bigger building yeah because they're coming up the stairs here it's only three wide gap but I think that's wide enough given the constraints we've got right so then this area here I didn't want to have a shelf for people to bang their heads on when they were coming up uh, so I thought I'd put a couple of things on the wall you already saw I had this album cover which I could put in or maybe an old picture of a bridge I've also got this one which sort of looks almost like an old decorative commemorative plate or something historic anyway and I think I'm going to put these two in because I just figure I could use the rock and roll one uh, lots of other places much more easily uh, and if I have a record shop or something like that then this will fit in really well so I'm going to save that one even though it's probably the one I like the most and then I'm going to put these two in and I'm going to put them in staggered so one's uh, and the other one's sort of accentuating that journey up the stairs then I've put little bars with clips uh, in all of the holes for the uh, studs on the side on this side I'm going to be using just attaching tiles kind of like I have there so it doesn't matter that that bar is poking almost all the way through because here is where I'm going to hang my musical instrument collection so this white acoustic guitar is from um, Steamboat Mickey set that was an idea set recently and then I've got loads and loads of different guitars I've been collecting for just this purpose so there's a sort of what is it aqua color with magenta on it put that one next I've got an azure one with different friends patterning on it and if you've ever been into one of these shops and there's a purple one uh, then you'll know they always have loads of guitars because some people collect guitars and lots of people want to play them. There's many different price points. There's a nice red one with kind of bat wings on it. I think that was from the uh, minifigure, uh, what was he called? Rock Frankenstein Monster or something like that from the Monsters minifigure range. And this was Batman's uh, axe, I think they call it when it's that shaped guitar anyway regardless of where they came from we've got a very good assortment and doesn't that look really special <laughs> I like that a lot brilliant I might try and get them all completely level Ooh. fiddly job I'll do it off camera but that looks really smart and I think that just really adds to the feeling that this is an Aladdin's cave of good stuff and that's what I wanted it to be right from the start and I put these two jumpers on um, in dark tan for people to stand on but that one I thought I'd put another bit of product and I thought I'd put a modern camera with tripod and um, used a couple of one by ones just to make that look like it's a really professional uh, lens and then you can just have that pointing any old direction you want so that's a really simple micro build just to fill up a bit of floor space as well so I think that's looking really good so now uh, there's only one more place for stock and that's sort of a, a shelf here in this bay window which is a continuation of the bay window uh, from the floor below uh, and then I just need to do the windows and frontage brilliant okay so I've got the front wall on now and you can see the Gold detailing has continued. We've got kind of a small bay window here because there isn't one on the floor below. And, um, but the style of the building is for this sort of older overhanging type structure like we've got here in spades, really starting to overhang quite a long way. And that one will have another one of these bay windows that's made using the hinge plates so I can have that perched right on the end there 
and then hold on I'm gonna take it off turned like that and then I can put on one last plate here and secure it with a two by three tile so you see there we've got a lovely bay window and that echoes the one on the floor below very good but sticking out even more into the street and I thought that was important because when we look at this now you can see already it's not just a great big long straight line yes we've got the bay window of this one but this one steps out even more and accentuates that it's an old building uh, much different time period from what will be all the rest of the modular and I've used the very few profile bricks available in this color to add a bit more detailing just on this level I've also added some modified plates with these bars on just for decoration both here and here and then on the outside I'm going to put this structure this will be holding our 3d sign so you can see there's a bracket piece there that can just hold that so that's even more sort of old-fashioned detail and decoration it's almost the sort of building you expect to see a date on that we're blessed with in the UK having quite a lot of old buildings that have survived and the inside another modified brick they actually had in sand blue was this one with this sort of rung on the end and I thought well I'll just put it in for a bit of detail really I mean I could clip uh, something to them for sale uh, or I could just have them as a bit of redundant detail from the original building but you can see I've also put a bracket piece there and that's so I can mount a wall clock on oh, can't find the holes there we, oh, there we are on the wall so there's a bit more decoration there and then right in there which is quite hard to see I can put two of these wedge plates in brown so I've got one with a big cup on and one with what I think is an Islander's sort of gold dish. So let's see if I can manage to do that on camera. Well, I can, but I think I'm going to have to take that dish off temporarily. Put the one with a cup in. And that kind of seals the hole uh, in the bay window whoop, that would have been uh, visible. So you would be able to see a bit of the outside without these in. So I've just sort of tied it up really so now if you look deep in there you can't see the outside it's quite dark I realize but um you know you can't see my fingers waving past apart from fruit through the glass so there we are that's how we want it so I can put the dish there it's nice and shiny another different color and maybe I'll have another bronze figure there as well on the lower shelf yeah, so that's looking packed and stacked again, just the way we like it. Now, another thing that I picked out from my bag that I didn't use last time was a teapot. I thought, well, that's good fun. So I'm going to put that actually in the lower level. Add that to there. Why not? Because I don't think it fits in this one too well. But there is our full upstairs. Now, I need to finish off all the tiles on the top because there will be another layer going on top of this. Uh, though it's a roof level for this this side will have two more floors interior floors then a roof this will just have a roof so they're going to be very different again with a different height and then I need to do my 3d sign right so I've added the tile layer on the reason why there are gaps is because that's what it's going to clip on to the next part of the building as it is there as it is here but otherwise we've got a nice smooth layer this bit is actually a little bit higher deliberately, but then that's because it's going to connect much like we did with the bit that was uh, on the top of the stairs, a little bit higher than the rest of it. So it would connect as a sort of datum for being able to uh, easily join the floors together. But if we take a last look at what we've got inside, the guitar wall, sort of treasures corner, the clock on the wall, all the electricals and statues on that wall, camera in the middle, on the lovely floor and some stuff on the wall as well in the back back window there 
tall decorated window there with a slight sort of overhang and a massive overhang for our bay window. Yeah, looking good. So let's pop all that on there. Got a teapot waiting in the street, but nonetheless. So I think you'll agree that looks quite glam, but quite old all at the same time. I think it looks rather special. So we just need a 3D sign. We had a named sign for Ronin's, but we need a 3D sign. And this, I just was amazed at the simplicity. So I've got a um, tool, which is the sort of uh, for changing a tire. And if you just put on three of the Technic balls, whoop, which is in this sort of flame orange rather than the gold, which you might expect, and then you get what is the international sign for a pawnbroker being three golden balls suspended. And uh, I had to look this up to see why that is the case. And it comes from Florence back in the <laughs> distant history, I suppose, the Medici family, uh, which were a great big rich banking family, uh, invented the type of banking, which was called Lombard banking in those days, uh, which is basically pawn shop banking as in getting a loan for products, and they're from the Lombard region, and the Lombard region has this uh, as its symbol. So that is the sort of sign you would see hanging from a shop like this. So then I've just got a bar, three long bar piece with a clip on the end, so I can clip onto the fourth bit of this, he says. There we go. And then I can put that into my Technic axle hole on those round plates. Give it a bit of a straighten. Hey, hey, and there it is. Love that. So it even sticks out further than the bay. And it's really bright and colorful as well. Yeah, I love my 3D signs. Great, I think that looks rather good. Do tell me what you think. Yeah, like it. Right, so that's part four of Modular Mondays. We've got our upstairs of our pawnbroker shop full of modern and precious things. Very easy to put on and securely held upper floor using this lovely sand blue colour, continuing the gold sort of decoration, continuing the bay window, an even greater overhang, just to give this profile a really uh, interesting shape. And then our very old fashioned three balls pawnbroker sign, which I absolutely adore. Brilliant. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be going back for a city update. Uh, but next Monday, we'll be going on to the next stage of this build, which will be the second floor of this side. See you then! <laughs>